All right, welcome friends. We're gonna do another live chat. I'm doing this uh, simultaneously on Instagram and also YouTube. So we'll see, uh, we'll see how it works. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get the stream and all that going well. So uh, let me bring up my cam for those guys on YouTube. And welcome, welcome to everybody. So I, you know, I'm trying to do these live streams because I want to connect with everybody, especially now since most people are locked down at home and taking advantage of some of the time that we have with this Corona thing. And one of the things that I, I totally recommend is that you guys use this to your advantage to uh, brush up on your skills, learn something new, uh, get an advance on your projects, push those things forward. And that's at least you're going to be productive while you're doing uh, the stuff here. So don't look at this as you know, a freak out time that we're all going to die and the world's coming to an end. It's actually, this is, let's spin this in a positive way that we're actually going to get something out of this and become, become better artists and become better people because of it. So a couple of things I wanted to talk about today were uh, some drawing tips, right? And so for those of you who on YouTube who don't know who I, who I am, uh, let me bring up a little bit of a, uh, a background. So uh, I'm Sergio Paez and I'm an animation director. I'm a story artist and I've been doing this for a long time and uh, I'm also one of the founding members of storyboardart.org and that is an online visual storytelling platform and we want to get you guys involved with doing better stories and getting the skills that you need to learn to get in the business and get working and doing the stuff that you want to be doing, telling the stories that you want to tell. So one of the things that we always struggle with at the beginning is the technique and the drawing part. There's a lot of focus on that at the beginning and so uh and rightfully so because you have to learn the foundation you have to learn how to draw that's the tool that we're going to use in order to uh to tell our stories so we communicate ideas and emotions through a pencil through a digital tool and that's how we create the images that eventually make it on screen for film and any kind of visual storytelling or narrative project so that could be movies, TV, video games, VR, anything that has like a timeline from beginning to end and you're telling a visual story, right? Um, theoretically, you can do this in anything, stop motion, whatever. It doesn't matter the end medium that you're doing, but you want to have visual storytelling and understand the film language and the cinema language so that you know what you're doing when it comes to telling an emotion, uh, establishing a character, and getting through all of that, okay? Uh, by the way, as we're doing these chats, if you guys have any questions uh, whatsoever, and, and there's a couple that I want to answer today about um, drawing in particular, but also just industry stuff in general, uh, please send that uh, my way. You can go ahead and, and chat that in if you want to. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been around the block <laughs> for a while, so I, I kind of have, at least I have my way of, of getting around and navigating things. Because a lot of people are asking questions, some of the things that have come up recently is what to do in your portfolio and how to get jobs and uh, you know, what you should be showing to other people. Um, I will put uh, another plug for the visual story course if you guys haven't found that. Uh, come, you know, go to storyboardart.org or go to visualstorycourse.com. The link will send you to the same place and that's a free online course. You can go through that and there's five really cool lessons that you can go through and it'll boost your visual storytelling. I'm in the background giving you guys uh, some of those tips and we're correcting people and uh, giving feedback to the, the submissions there. So that's an easy, free, all access way to uh, get your feet wet with some visual storytelling, okay? Um, in terms of drawing, I just wanna show you this and let's see if I can, so these are some of the studies that I, I do recently. Hopefully you can see that, I'll bring this up uh, kind of on both cameras here. But these are just some figure drawings, some anatomy studies that I've been doing recently and I actually I do this on animation paper. You can still see the you can see the pegs, right? <laughs> I love this animation paper because back in the day I used to be a 2D animator, and uh, I just the, the feel of this paper is really awesome. And I have I have a bunch of it still, but uh, here we go. That'll make it <laughs> vertically. So just just gestures, and you know these aren't really to sh I'm showing you guys, but I don't really plan to show anybody. I, like on this one here, I was trying to figure out the anatomy and basically uh, understand where the back muscles were and working from photographs and uh, but there were this was from bodiesinmotion.photo which I highly recommend that website for doing um, for drawing stuff so uh, anyway it, the idea is that you got to have this 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 uh, this discipline to continually draw so you're not going to be able to become a story artist 
if you just magically think you have the skills. This is a mental discipline that you have to learn over time and that you have to get better at doing. So it's just like anything. Think about, think about learning music or playing the piano or doing dance or uh, you know, riding a bike. You know, there's a certain, if you haven't done it before, there's a certain ramp up and you have to learn the skills and then eventually you start getting better at it. And I, you know, I like to use comparison like music because uh, it takes a long time to be really good at the guitar or the piano. And if you do it over and over again, you're gonna feel like the scales are getting better. You're gonna feel the, the physical coordination in your, in your hands and your mind are working together and you get better at it. The same thing goes with drawing. So the only way you get better is by practicing. That's the only way. There is no shortcut. You have to put in the work. You have to put in the time and you have to draw. Guess what? It's actually fun to do this. This is enjoyable. This is creation. So um, this might look a little academic, like my anatomy studies, like uh, I've been showing here. But, um, but you know, I, I, I get a kick out of that stuff because I can use that. What I'm doing is I'm building up my visual memory. So when I have to draw a character from, from memory, I can go ahead and do that, right? Uh, so that's, that's the reason why you do this and you draw over and over and over again. And after a while, you, you know, you start getting better at it. So let me, uh, before I get to questions, I do want just a real quick demo. Uh, I want to, let me share my screen here for the guys on YouTube. Sorry, Instagram people. I'll, I'll try and talk through it and see if we can, um, if we can get that going. So let me close uh, my YouTube feed. And uh, so let me bring up, this is Autodesk Sketchbook. For, for people and you, you guys can watch this on YouTube afterwards for those on Instagram but I just want to show a couple a couple little uh, tricks here is that you know when you draw let's say you know there's something about the line quality right when you're when you're drawing so if I'm just drawing like a free flowing free flowing lines here you can kind of just like put those in here and get that what what I see a lot of people doing when they first start out they do these kind of sketchy little like broken lines to create a face or something. And it's almost like dots. And I used to do this, right? I, I remember when I was younger, like drawing like this, right? You, you kind of, you have this kind of broken way of getting the figure or whatever it is that you're, you're drawing. You might be copying from a photo or doing something like that. That's actually a habit I like to tell people to get, get, get away from. What I want to see you guys do and sorry if I'm shaking the camera on Instagram because I'm, I'm drawing on my Cintiq monitor here, is I want to get you guys to do a, a full stroke, right? So this is like a confident line. And, you know, even if you put it down wrong, like, so if I'm, if I'm drawing a character, right, um, and let's say I'm doing a profile, I can, uh, oh, hold on, let me turn off my, my touch. It's throwing me off. So you just draw like a complete, series of, of strokes, right? So you don't see me doing this like dotted line thing or sketchy, scratchy thing. I'm trying to get in there with a little more confidence and just draw like a profile, right? Here is just a very simple profile. You throw in the ear, you throw in the eyeball with the eyebrow, a smiley face, and you're done, right? But it's, it's the stroke and that confidence that you get when you're doing something. You make it a complete statement about what it, what it is. You, you're not just like, kind of guessing. I, I find people that they just doodle, they, they do these circles and doodling and stuff, which is all good. I mean, you, eventually you do some figure drawing and this is where it's going to lead you is that you want to build the construction, you know, the, like the way you get the axis of the head and you start adding the neck and the chin and, and all this stuff here, you get the, the volume of the torso and maybe you might do the axis of the torso and that kind of stuff. Uh, again, I'm just, I'm creating volumes for those of you guys <laughs> in Instagram. So when you do these volumes and stuff, uh, that's all fine, right? But eventually when you're doing your storyboards, let me just get rid of that. What you want to draw is you have that volume in your head, but what you put down are the least amount of strokes when it comes to your drawing and you create an efficiency of your drawing. And that is what actually creates a, um, a solidity and an efficiency and a, and a quickness. Like you can get through your drawing really fast. So, you know, oftentimes I'll do a lot of outline shapes and you know you can still have volumes and construction, um, but all of that is kind of in my head. I know where the the axis is, right? I don't actually have to draw it um, all that much, right? And after a while, it's, it all comes with practice, and and you kind of do this. You can you know eventually. I'm cutting off the legs here. That's okay. Um, you know you you kind of just do this, and you you build the outline of the character, right? And I'm just drawing random things, and usually with the storyboard you just gotta go quick, right? So I'm just gonna like 
really quickly put in eyeballs and a mouth. And you know, if, if I want a bigger, you put a bigger mouth. That's that's it, right? Just really fast as a thumbnail statement. What happens is you can go in on this on another layer, and you can bring this down with the opacity, and then you can clean it up, right? So just in this program, in sketchbook. Then I can go in a little bit later and just like get the volumes right. But the way to do it is just get that statement out there. Don't spend time sketching in the line work. It, it, it's, it just shows that you're a little bit unsure about what you're trying to draw. So you're building up that confidence of line. You're, you're building the efficiency and get really quick at it. Okay. So I won't go through and, and continue that drawing, but that's kind of just one of the things I wanted to tell you about is how to do that and, um, and, and what you should be looking for, right? So you should be looking for a confidence of line. You should be looking for things that have a quick and complete statement without, uh, without too much uh, overthinking or over sketching. Right. So that that's how you would do that. Right. Um, cool. Anyway, let me get to some of the questions and uh, and then we'll see uh, what, what's on your guys' mind. So Shupra Animation Artist. All right. Good to, good to see you. Thank you for joining here. Do you storyboard from screenplays or script drafts? Absolutely. All the time. In fact, I prefer doing that because that's the starting point and it will help you uh, get your ideas out. It's a good limiting factor if you have a written outline or you have a, uh, a series of like a shot list of what you need to do. And then you go linearly and you start blocking it out in thumbnails. So yeah, I, I, it, I find it much, help, much more helpful to go from a screenplay or even a rough draft of a script and board that out than actually just coming up with something out of thin air because you have to kind of follow a, a, a method to creating the story. So it, it really does help. If you start first with a written word, it could either be you that you you sit down and you write what you want your story to be, or you can work with writers or other collaborators who come up with a draft or some kind of outline, some kind of uh, beats, and uh, and go from there. So yeah, that's a really good exercise. So so for people who want some resources like that, I recommend you go to storyboardart.org and go to the Pro Artist Guide. Uh, you're gonna have to sign up. It's a free account. You don't have to you know pay any money or anything like that. It's totally free to access this stuff, but there are some sample scripts and links to pages where you can download some scripts there. Um, animation stuff, live action stuff, there's all kinds of things that you can find there. All right. Great to see you guys. I'm so glad you could join us here. Okay. Hey, Casa Creativa is on. How are you guys? Muchos besos to you. Okay. Can we see your screen? Yeah, I'm sorry. You know what I'm going to do next time for you Instagram people is I'll, I'll probably point the camera at my screen. But check out the YouTube replay afterwards, and uh, and we'll we'll probably post that here on Instagram too. Um, so, uh, do I write my own material sometimes? Yes, actually, absolutely. And uh, I'm working on a couple stories right now. There's a couple personal stories, and I'm working on uh, some development uh, on a feature. So I'm working on a movie called Alien Country, and we're right now we're going through uh, kind of the writer's room. And story time, where we're we're developing and and really breaking down the the story again into uh, into beats. So we're really constructing the story from from what has already been done, but kind of giving it another rewrite here. And we're going to see if what we can come up with um, is going to improve on what we already have. So that's something that that uh, we, and how do you do that? Is that you, you got to do this? You have to understand your story structure. You have to understand your written. Uh, technique with script writing and that stuff. So I highly encourage you guys to study that even as a visual story artist because eventually what we're going to do, we're going to take that that redo, that redraft of the script and we're going to board it all out. We're going to storyboard this thing out because we have to be ultra efficient when it comes to actually shooting this movie. Um, and then on, on my own, I'm actually boarding these things out too. And, um, and uh, you know, on my own stories is, is coming up with the written stuff and then uh, I'll go in and actually do the visuals. Meanwhile, you know, I still do sketches. Like I'm all, all the time like looking up reference and getting on the internet or Googling something, maybe Pinterest and creating a board and using that as reference. So uh, there's that too. So it's, in the end, it's gonna be visual, but you have to, it's also good to like outline and plan your, your structure when you do that, okay? Ah, thanks Dara for putting out the uh, YouTube link if, for those of you who are interested. Uh, okay, cool. Thanks for that question. Uh, good question here. A follow up on Shipra Animation Artist. Do you beatboard first? What's your process? Um, usually, like for example, for work, working on this this movie, let's use that as an example. 
we're going to beat that out in written beats, okay? And then we're going to actually flesh that out into script form, and it becomes a dialogue. So imagine the script is already done. So the next thing you would do as a story artist is I would actually thumbnail those out in the major beats for that sequence. So you have a scene. Let's say there's two characters that um, you know discovered some some magic potion, right? So they're in a cave or something looking for something, and they discover it. What you want to do there is like identify the major beats, and I'll usually thumbnail, thumbnail those out in the rough form, which are just some tiny little drawings. I do them digitally, so the drawings are really rough. They're still like HD quality, you know, 1920 by by 1080 size, but they're just a little looser. Um, that's why I mentioned to you guys about the simplification when it comes to drawing uh, your characters or your storyboards or whatever. That line work, if you keep it clean when you're when you're just starting out. Uh, you can turn those in and they're very readable and legible for anybody else looking at them. So even at that rough pass, you can you can communicate your idea to somebody. That that would be the first pass. And then after that, you know, usually have a discussion and make sure that that's on the right uh, path. And the next thing you would do is uh, do a, a, a cleanup pass. It's kind of your second storyboard pass and you flesh those out with, or I would flesh those out with tones, a little tighter drawings. Much, many more poses for continuity boards because I, I end up doing animatics a lot. So I had in hundreds of poses for, um, for a sequence. And, and that's it. And then you, you do it again. So you turn that in, you show it to people, you, know, you get, make sure that that's right. You edit that together if you're going to do an animatic and make sure it plays well. If not, you have to correct it. You go back and you reboard it. So it's that process of doing it over and over again. That's kind of what I do, right? Um, yeah, Rod, James Rodney. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, it is incredibly exciting to do stuff. I love storytelling. I hope you guys too uh, do too. That's that's really what what it's all about. All right. Uh, or you're referring to the movie. Thanks, buddy. Okay. So. So uh, there's a question here about comics versus storyboards. I would encourage you to check out my my previous uh, uh, live streams. Uh, they're on YouTube. So go to a YouTube channel, subscribe, check that out. And we did talk about the differences between comics and, and, and actual storyboards. The real main difference, I'll give you kind of a Cliff Notes version, the real main difference here is that um, the formatting for storyboards stays the same. And you have a little more leeway with comics doing vertical panels or like different shape panels. You can also get a little more artistic depending on the story for comics and you do a little more, um, uh, let's say, more graphic representations or or kind of abstract stuff you can do that in a comic book panel with story I mean you could still kind of do that in in film and storyboards uh, for any kind of narrative project that that has some kind of timing in there uh, but most of the time you uh, you just have to keep it pretty traditional the thing that you do need to do and the, the crossover there which is pretty much the same is you got to make everything uh, clear and legible have a lot of depth make it exciting camera angles all that stuff goes the same so there's a lot of crossover between comics and storyboards Cool. Great questions, by the way. All right, let me uh, let me get another couple of questions here. All right, Super Animation, you are on fire, my friend. Thank you for asking all these questions. So let me hit let me hit you up here too. Is uh, how do you achieve good, good composition? Any tips and tricks? Uh, yes. Yeah, so I I end up repeating a lot of the same things to many people. The reason why is you learn by repetition. Okay, that's one. <laughs> I learned by repetition. So you have to get to kind of beat that and burn that into your memory. And the thing is, we end up doing the same things with visual storytelling uh, over and over again. And I used to have like, there's like these 10 bullet points that I pinned to my, my animation desk when I was uh, just starting out. And they're kind of like 10 pillars for me to remind myself like, um, you know, am I cutting from a, a high angle shot to a low angle shot? That's one of them. Do I have good silhouette? That's another one. Am I doing foreground, middle ground, background, right? Which is a, all about creating depth. So in any one panel, am I trying to do foreground, middle ground, and background? That is uh, a trick to create really good composition and have depth. The other thing to do is uh, horizontal and vertical lines. I call this out to a lot of people. And even, um, so uh, let me see if I can come up with another couple tips there. Uh, in terms of those horizontal and vertical lines, what you do want to do is make sure that uh, as you're drawing your compositions that you have a, uh, 
you have an idea of one that you what your what your purpose is or what your focal point is, and then some easy things that you can do to avoid um, horizontal ver vertical lines is just simply tilt your camera lens. If you do that and you tilt it ever so slightly, in fact, like I can move my camera, ding. If I tilt this, hopefully it doesn't fall over. Give me a second. Yep. For you guys on Instagram, and I'll do this, ding. All right? How about that? So it's a little bit off kilter right now. Okay. So you see that it's not exactly horizontal and vertical. Just that will create visual interest, right? Because the bookshelf in the background is a little weird. Like the way that I'm now, instead of me being vertical, now I'm tilted, right? So this creates visual interest, and then that's that's what you want to do. Another another tip that I'll tell you guys, which I say all the time, you want things coming at the camera and going away from the camera, right? So I can punch my fist here and you see this thing coming at the camera and going away from the camera, that'll give you that dynamic motion. So don't just have things going profile, right? You don't want things like this. You know, it's just so boring, no matter how you know, how much depth you get in there, get that thing coming at the camera, going away from the camera, that'll give you that much more depth. All right, let me let me fix my <laughs> let me fix my cameras here. Uh, good questions, by the way. Those are all things. So, okay, you know, if you if you want some, if you want to boost on some tips, again, join us on Facebook, and there's a there's a great group that we have right now that's really on fire. They're doing some amazing work um, through the the Visual Story course and some other stuff, and people are posting some really cool things, either storyboards they've done themselves, and there's all range of talent there. So there's people who are seasoned veterans who are doing some incredible work, and we, you know we're all really impressed. And there's guys that are just starting out, and they're also doing some very inspiring things because it's about the ideas. So they have some good ideas there. Cool. So just a couple more minutes here. I'm going to answer a couple of these questions, and then uh, and then we'll call it for today. Uh, thanks for joining. All right. So this is a good question here. So from uh, Sumit Mandre. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that all right. Uh, when I start an animatic, I go with the flow and complete it. After that, I feel some characters are missing. <clears throat> maybe missing the style of the show, how do you think about every point? So let me see if I can summarize that question. So it seems like you're, you're going through in a linear way and you're starting your animatic. And then what you do is you go back and you look at it and you see if there's something missing or if it's working or not, right? Um, now, I think that method, a lot of people use that method, uh, professionals and everybody all the way, you know, just from starting out. There's some people who kind of go from start to finish and then they knock out their ideas and they kind of just get into that flow. And that that's great. I've seen people have some really good um, results from that. One thing I would caution you though too, and this is why I start really rough and I start kind of small sketches um, and, and I recommend a lot of doing thumbnails, is you work out your ideas that way and you can see them small, all kind of with the, the big picture stuff and you see them in the general way of how you're drawing it right and you can see if there are missing chunks in there or they're like the shots aren't cutting well enough just just small and then what you do is you go in a, in a second pass and you go through that and you and then you kind of clean it up a little bit and then you go through your animatic when you put that in there so using a program like Toon Boom uh, Storyboard Pro uh, you can actually create an animatic as you're drawing and that's a really good advantage because you can time out your your storyboards and your panels working in that program and it really you know that's something that's that is catching on that's one of the trends that that's in the industry and I recommend you guys try that program out and you don't necessarily have to use that program to create an animatic I end up using Premiere and some other editing software and After Effects and stuff as well you can even do this in 3d but it's really important to time out your sequences because that's really the end game is you you're creating something narrative with timing from beginning to end and uh, even if a sequence is one minute or two minutes, you have a beginning, middle, and end, and you want to make sure that that works. So when you push that play button, that's really the key. You can feel things are too slow or the shots aren't working, the cuts aren't working. And when I say the cuts aren't working, that usually means that you have uh, two camera angles that are conflicting, and you might have shapes in your frame that are jumping from one to the other. So if you have a character and he's filling up the frame and you cut to something else that's also filling up the frame, you might have a little jump there, even though they're two different characters. So, you know, that, that's the kind of stuff you want to be looking out for. Cool. All right. Yeah, it's great to, uh, to meet all you guys. By the way, I should mention too, because um, uh, let's see, Nicola and Angelina Art here. I hope I spelled, uh, you pronounced that right. Um, 
was, is talking about uh, Lightbox. So we were at Lightbox Expo last year. We plan to be there this year. Hopefully things will be on track with all the, uh, the crazy coronavirus stuff. So let's all cross our fingers for that. All right. And I think I'm going to take uh, your last question and we'll call it for today. So what inspired you to get into storyboards? So let me tell a little bit about my background and we'll see if that rings true for, for some of you guys. So I actually started out as a 2D animator and ever since I was a kid, I really loved 2D animation and classical animation with, you know, the Disney stuff and, and all that. I kind of grew up with those movies and like Warner Brothers and cartoons. I loved it. I just, every time I watched that, I would just laugh out loud because it was just so entertaining for me to, to watch these characters. And just as a kid, I was just mesmerized by that stuff. So I grew up watching all kinds of cartoons, everything from G.I. Joe's to DuckTales to, you know, Disney movies and and then eventually, you know, 3D animation came in there. And I was blown away by Toy Story and, and all that. So I knew I wanted to get into animation and I wanted to become an animator. So when I became, when I, I went to school for it, went to art school, I graduated looking to get into becoming a 2D animator. I worked as a 2D animator for maybe, maybe close to five years out of, you know, out of art school. And uh, what happened was uh, 2D animation were kind of dried up in the United States. In fact, all over the world were kind of dried up. Yay for Klaus and those guys in um, in Spain who who did the Klaus movie. Um, I actually worked with those guys uh, when I when I just started out, and that I was that was my like last two D animation job was working on um, the Three Wise Men, which was another film they did a long time ago when they were back. They, they were called uh, Animagic Studios. At any rate, when th that kind of two D animation work dried up, I transitioned into, and I had always been doing storyboard work. And I transitioned into doing storyboards because I could still use my drawing skills and I could still use my 2D animation skills because you still need to know about composition and posing and good, good drawing and, and all that stuff, which translates really well to doing storyboards. So I, I recommend people study 2D animation if they want to get into doing storyboards because it'll help you with like the squash and, squash and stretch and expressions and all of that stuff for... Um, for doing just you know traditional storyboards you're still doing them uh with you know with pencil well digital pencil and paper right so they're you're still drawing right that's why i'm holding up my cintiq pen here because i was just doing that a second ago but uh all those skills really apply so and then what i found out was i really loved doing story work because you have much more control over the story and i can manipulate the characters and i can manipulate the cameras and i can really uh, really give an experience for the audience member. And I was in a much better position of control than you are as a 2D animator. So a 2D animator does like a shot by shot thing. And within that shot, you can create emotion and you can create storytelling. But as a story artist, you're doing the whole sequence. And sometimes you're doing, you know, the whole act and the whole movie. And then now I got into directing. And so now I have to worry about the bigger picture stuff. And you have to learn all of the things about story structure and, and characters and it just I love it and I still use my my 2d animation my art skills there so um, that's my pitch for storyboards and one thing that I will say to all you guys before we call it we call it, we call this and, and we call it a night is that uh, good quality story artists are still really high in demand because the skills that we need as story artists are really hard to learn and there's not many people teaching it that's why we established storyboardart.org so you guys can have a resource and learn about storytelling and visual storytelling. And there's things on writing and there's things on animation and there's things on you know, visual effects, but there's not any visual storytelling specific story artist a platform. That's the kind of gap that we want to fill. And the reason we set this up, because for me, it was extremely difficult to learn these tools. I had to, to learn it, uh, you know, grinding it out at, at, at these studios. And I was fortunate enough to have people mentor me and show me this stuff. And now, you know, we want to give back and we do that. So, um, so yeah, check out some of the things that we're doing. Well, great. I think on that note, let's end this one. And I wish you guys the best. Keep on sharing some stuff with us. Go ahead and subscribe and, and link to us on any of the projects that you're doing. And we can share that either on Facebook, on any of the social media platforms that we have. All right, friends. Thanks for joining us. And we will see you next time. So I'm going to sign out here and we'll give you a big shout out. Thanks, friends.